In my first blog post about sharpening, I explained how sharpening works, but I didn't really explain how to use it in Photoshop, and that's what I want to do here. There are two major approaches to using sharpening, and one of them is more common with graphic art like this type of thing. The other is more commonly used in photography, and since that's what I most frequently do, I'm going to spend a little bit more time on that, but I'm going to begin by uh, showing you how to use sharpening on an image like this one. I'm going to begin by opening up Unsharp Mask, which is under the filter menu. And here you can see the options that should be familiar from the first post. The amount slider, the radius slider, and the threshold. I'm going to begin by lowering this threshold down just a little bit. But the first approach here Instead of using a high amount, it uses a lower amount, and it uses a higher radius. What this means is that instead of having a dark halo around the edge and uh, a bright halo on the bright side, there's a very smooth and subtle gradient instead. And in fact, let me show you the preview. The change here is relatively subtle. You can see a little bit of brightening around the bright side of the edge, and maybe a little bit of darkening. Uh, but it's pretty subtle. But the difference is noticeable between having the effect on uh, off and on. And by increasing that a little bit, the effect becomes more pronounced. Of course, using a large radius like this isn't going to be very helpful in cases where you have a lot of detail, because the large um, halos here are going to run into each other and cancel out the effect. So let me show you what's more common in, in photography. Let me zoom in here. This is an image that I took in New York City a few months ago of a building that had some interesting um, sunlight reflecting from a nearby building and creating this pattern. I'm just going to zoom in to a level that allows us to see a little bit more of that detail. Right there should be fine. Again, I'm going to open the Unsharp Mask dialog. But in this case, what I'm going to do is use a small radius and a high amount. In fact, I'm going to push this up to about 150. And the radius amount will depend on the resolution and size of your image. In this case, I'm going to take a look at the effect in my preview window here. And I see at this point at around uh, one and a little over one pixel, I'm getting a noticeable effect. But it's not over sharpening. With a lot of sharp edges like, like this photo, um, you can raise the amount higher than if you have a photo with a lot of smooth um, tonal variation. I'm going to push this all the way up to 
200 just to emphasize the effect a little bit more. You can see that when I do that, around really um, contrasty areas such as here in this uh, window where there's a, a dark cross beam against the white window pane, there's a visible halo. And that's the kind of thing that I'd normally want to avoid. However, sharpening has to be done with the output of the image in mind. If you are creating an image for the internet, then the best thing to do is to resize the image to its final size, and then you can apply the sharpening so that these halos create a sharpening effect, but they aren't, aren't visible. For printing, you have a little bit more leeway because as an image is printed, there's going to be, especially with an inkjet printer, a little bit of bleed, and it's going to lessen the effect of these halos. I'm going to go ahead and press OK here. And zoom in a little bit further. Now if I undo that effect, you can see how, to begin with, this really had a little bit of a soft effect to it, but redoing that, it really makes those lines crisp. Using this method of sharpening, I very rarely go above about two pixels in the radius slider. It's much more common for me to be down around the one pixel area, sometimes even 0.8, especially if I'm outputting for the web. Choosing the exact settings for your photograph really depend, as I say, on the output, and I will go over those settings in a little bit more detail in the next video.